A people that values its privileges above its principles soon loses both. Society exists only as a mental concept. In the real world, there are only individuals. Time once again to sit back and relax with your favorite drink, my friends. Eh? Listen. Let me start off by saying that I joined the experiment a while ago. I've tried to talk before to people about it, but nobody believes me and I can't exactly blame them. I haven't been able to properly sleep, eat, or live since I made it back home. Played by feelings of tremendous guilt. I hope sharing this will help ease my conscience. Day one. The apartment looked pretty decent. It was small, but had everything I needed. One room with a bed, although pillow and blanket were missing. In the middle of the room was a table with two chairs. Not sure I would need two, as the main part of this experiment was me being alone in the room, isolated from the outside world. In the back was a small food elevator, like the ones you see in old movies. Well, that's how I'd receive my meals. There were big abstract paintings. I had a chalkboard to write on, and of course there was a laptop so I could communicate with... With who exactly? I opened the laptop. Everything was wiped away. No internet access, no apps or programs. Only one little icon in the middle of the screen. Social. I double-clicked it, thinking it might provide some more information. Social will start soon. Make sure laptop is charged at all times. All right. I guess I have to wait. I walked over to the chalkboard. Somebody must have been in this room before, because it said, Days, written on top with white chalk. Underneath were ten strokes. I drew a circle around the seven strokes instead of wiping them away. Next to it, I drew one stroke, for my first day. I took away my phone. I had no calendar, or even clock, so I figured it could get difficult to keep the days in check. I realized I didn't remember if they told me how long I'd be staying. My window view didn't offer much. All I could see were empty fields, and I could tell that I was pretty high up. I tried opening the window to let in some fresh air, but it was blocked. Probably so no one could jump out after going crazy from the solitude. I was the kind of person that loved being alone, though. I had a pretty apartment, food being provided for me, decent payment, and I'm living my dream. I would have been dumb not to participate. Ding, ding. The laptop was lighting up in neon green lights. Well, I guess things were getting started. The social app was running and the former screen had turned into something that looked like a chat screen. Welcome, John. We are very excited that you are participating in this real-life experiment. I am social. Everything you need or what we need from you will be communicated through me. You will not directly talk to anyone else during your time here. Make sure that your laptop is charged at all times. Do you have any questions so far? Um, hello, social. I'm also excited. I haven't received any sheets, pillows, or blankets from my bed yet. Could those be sent over, please? That will be up to the other participants, as you will soon learn. Are you ready for the first round? Um, yes. As you know, you will be receiving all your food and drinks from us. What exactly that will be, however, will be chosen by another participant. For the first round, you can choose a meal combination for participant Julie. Well, I was actually pretty excited about this. I was awful at making the right decisions. Probably one of the reasons I changed my major three times. Well, it might be interesting to put my fate into someone else's hands. I scrolled down the list of food and drink items, wondering what Julia might enjoy. There are a number of breakfast items, such as pancakes, eggs, bacon, but also a lot of random, disgusting-sounding stuff. Raw liver, bull testicles, sausage water. Ugh, pretty nasty. You'd really have to hate the other participants to send any of that. Except if you were into power moves. Eventually, I picked toast with jam, scrambled eggs and cheese with a cup of coffee and a glass of orange juice. Happy with my choice, I sent it in. A minute later, the laptop started ringing again. Julia has chosen your breakfast. Walk to the food elevator now to pick it up. 
I wasn't too hungry just yet, but I was hoping for something nice to drink. I opened the small gap of the elevator and got the tray out. A piece of bread with something green on it. I picked it up just to realize that the stuff on top was mold. I gagged and let it fall back on the plate. I guess Julia was one of those people that liked power plays. I grabbed the glass next to it. At least she sent me some water. Oh, my throat felt extremely dry, so I started chugging right away. Oh, I really should have smelled it first. What I was drinking there wasn't water. It was vinegar. As the acidy taste filled up my mouth, I couldn't keep it in anymore. I ran to the bathroom and started puking into the toilet. The bitter taste of vile made me feel even worse, but I had no toothbrush or toothpaste either. I wanted to rinse out my mouth, but there was no water. I couldn't even flush the freaking toilet. Well, this experiment was starting off pretty badly. I was just about to ask social about this when I heard another ringing noise. You just lost 50 social points. What, what the hell? What are social points? During your participation, you collect points. More points equal more power and more access. During this experiment, you have to make many decisions. One of them on who you want to be. Do you want to be nice or gain power? Hmm. I'm not sure I understand, but I'm really not feeling great. Is there any way I can get some water? That's not up to me, John. You have another decision to make. This time you'll be sending an item to Manuel. Please select one item out of this list. Toothpaste, a shock collar, a knife. Well, this list seemed even more random, but this time I really had to think this through. If I sent toothpaste, I'd probably get even more negative points. Although, at that point, I wasn't sure what exactly that meant. Well, the knife sounded like a terrible idea. I figured if I picked the shock collar, he could just decide not to wear it. Congratulations. You just received 30 social points. Walk over to the elevator now to see what Manuel sent you. It was a blanket. Oh, I felt like a real dick, but I kept telling myself that this was part of the experiment. Maybe those people didn't even exist. My laptop let out another sound. There was a new icon on the screen. A green circle with a smiley face on it. I pressed it, but nothing happened. Manuel has received and attached the shock collar around his neck. Press green circle to send over shocks. Oh, shit. Had I just shocked him without even knowing? No, no, that couldn't be true. They can't purposefully hurt participants. I grabbed my blanket and took a nap. The experiment had only just begun and I was already exhausted. The taste of vinegar and puke in my mouth wasn't helping either. When I woke up again, it was already getting dark outside. Had I missed lunch? I walked over to the laptop, but there were no missed messages. I was really getting fed up with this experiment, when my laptop made another sound. Dinner time. Pick one meal for Jackie. I scrolled through the list again, but I had no idea what to do. Should I go with something decent and risk losing points? I went with a safe choice and sent a cup of vegetable broth. Something I was really craving myself after throwing up. It wasn't a real meal, but it wouldn't make them sick either. After my choice was sent over, I went to the elevator to see what Jackie had sent me. It was a BLT and a bottle of Coke. Oh, thank you, Jackie, I shouted out loud. I felt a little bad for only sending her broth, but at the same time I was so happy to have something decent to eat and drink it would also kill the terrible taste in my mouth. Day 2 The sound of an alarm blasting through the apartment pulled me out of sleep. I had no idea where it came from, but it wasn't from the laptop. The sound was followed by a robotic voice. Score too low. Wake up immediately. It was still dark outside. It felt like it was the middle of the night. I got up from my bed, which felt like pure concrete. My head was aching from not having a pillow, but I was grateful that I had at least received a blanket. Oh, it was freezing cold. 
I realised then that I didn't have any spare clothes. Hadn't I brought any? As I walked over to the laptop, the loud alarm finally stopped. Good morning, John. Your social score has gotten dangerously low. Increase score now by pressing shock button. No! As a negative player, you will lose all perks, including nutrition. Remember, more social points equal more power. Uh, I don't care. I don't want more power. The music started blasting again. I felt like my eardrums would explode. Shielding them with my hands wasn't helping. As if this wasn't bad enough, a foul smell filled up the room. I thought I'd throw up again. Oh, fuck this. This isn't real. I said out loud and pressed the shock icon. I took a deep breath and pressed it two more times. Finally, the siren stopped. Congratulations, John. You are now the highest ranking participant. Well, yeah, because you freaking forced me to. It is now time to pick a meal for Jackie. I felt bad for only sending her broth last night, so I chose pancakes and orange juice. After a few minutes, I went to pick up my meal from the elevator. This time, I almost threw up by just looking at it. On the plate, I found the head of a chicken, raw and bloody. Next to it was a glass of what I can only imagine was blood as well. I guess I deserved that. I was really fed up with this whole operation. I was hungry, tired and sad. No money was worth this torture. I want to get out of this experiment now. I'm done. You can't leave. You will stay until the experiment is finished. What the fuck? You can't force me to stay. I never consented to any of this. Yes, you did. And you will stay until the experiment is finished. I started thinking about that. Did they give me a contract? Oh, as much as I tried to remember, I couldn't. I couldn't even remember what day it was today. Do you remember how you came here, John? I didn't. Do you remember what you did before you came here? I was so certain that I had joined an experiment. They'd offered me payment, but as much as I tried, I couldn't recall how or when that had happened. I remember things as to who my family and friends were. I remember what my home looks like, but not what I'd been doing lately. I'd started studying psychology after giving up on coding, but oh, when was that? My mind was blank. <sighs> what the fuck did you do to me? We do not make any decisions for you. Play the game right and you will be leaving the experiment happy and healthy. Who are you? What is this? I am social. Time for another decision. You can send something to a participant of your choice. Pick from one of the following items. A gun. A bottle of water. A death threat. I decided to send a bottle of water to Manuel. It might cost me some points, but if I'd really shocked him, he deserved this. After what must have been an hour, the laptop started ringing again. You just received a video. Press play now. It was a video of a shirtless man, maybe in his mid-thirties. He stared right into the camera, and I could see the shock collar around his neck. Without a word, he picked up a knife and cut into his palm. With his other hand, he dipped his index finger into the blood and started writing something on his chest. Mary. No way, I thought. This must be a coincidence. I think he tried writing something else underneath. Well, it would have been really hard to recognize what it was with the smudged blood, but I knew exactly what it said. It was an address. One that I recognized very well. It was the address of Mary. My mother. Day 3. I hardly slept through the night. I wasn't too afraid what Manuel might do just yet, considering he was locked in here as well. What scared me, however, was that whatever these people were, they knew where my mother lives, and I had no way to warn her. I needed to talk to Social, 
figure out if they were a real person. Maybe I could well, somehow level with them. I couldn't contact social if they didn't initiate the conversation, and I didn't know how long it would be until it messaged me about breakfast, so I impulsively walked over to the laptop and removed the charger. The laptop needs to be charged at all times. The robotic voice filled up the room again. Well, I ignored it. I ignored the sirens and the smell and stared at the laptop. In hindsight, I was a pretty big idiot. Instead of going through this in a clever way, I just tried to force a reaction out of it. The smell got stronger and I started feeling weaker. I could hardly think anymore or move. Everything turned dark. I woke up on the bed. My head was hurting like crazy. It took me a little while to get back to my senses, but then I noticed that the laptop was attached to the charger again. Somebody had been in here. Suddenly an excruciating pain went through my entire body. I felt like somebody was choking me. Panting and shaking, I slowly reached over to my neck where my fingers touched the metal. Not only had someone been in here, they would given me a shock collar. I slowly walked over to the laptop. Social had been messaging me. I have received information that your laptop isn't attached to the charger. Somebody is on their way to fix the issue. Breakfast time. Please choose one of the following items on the list for participant Josh. Josh, is there a new person? Josh has selected your items. Go to elevator now to pick up your meal. Please choose one of the following items to send to participant Julia. A book. A gun. Five minutes of fresh air. The item that Julia selected for you will arrive soon and will be attached by one of our workers. Oh, that bitch. I didn't even get the chance to send anything because I'd been passed out. Another shock went through my body. Even more painful this time. I picked myself up from the ground and got back to my laptop. I hadn't noticed before, but the shock icon was gone. At, at least the chat was still open. This was my chance to contact Social. Social, are you there? Hello, John. You've been very quiet today. Remember, less activity equals less social points. Were you inside my room? I never visit the participants. I thought about what to say. I had to be more careful. Social, are you a real person? I am social. I started to think that I was talking to a bot. Well, if that was true, I could get some answers out of it as long as I asked the right questions. What's my current social score? Your social score is plus ten. You are now the second lowest ranking participant. Who's on top? I am not allowed to share this information with you. I figured it must be either Julie or Emmanuel. Josh or Jackie would be the lowest ranking. Uh, why is it beneficial to have many points? Higher points equal more power. Define power. In this experiment, we want to see how much it will take someone to get to the top. Being on top means more options for decisions. Decisions such as getting food, comfort, and freedom. Freedom, as in being able to leave. Dinner time. You may now choose a meal for participant Julia. I was about to pick bull testicles when another shock went through my body. My hands were shaking, and I could hardly breathe anymore. She was sending me a message. I had to be careful. She had total control over me at the moment. I picked steak, potatoes, beans, and a bottle of wine. The best options I could find. It felt awful sending someone that was torturing me these things, especially while I felt like I was starving. But I didn't want to risk getting another shot. I was still hurting from the last one. After a moment, I went to pick up my dinner for the night. A chicken sandwich, coffee, and a bottle of water. Well, the coffee was cold, but I didn't care. I hadn't eaten anything decent since that BLT, and I was even happier about that water. I took a few sips and decided to ration the rest. I honestly couldn't believe that Julia had sent me something decent. If it hadn't been for the shock collar around my neck, 
I would have thought that she was actually starting to be nice. Well, at least she didn't shock me again for the rest of the evening. I spent the rest of the evening making up a game plan. I was done just playing it safe. If I wanted any chance of getting out of here, I had to make it to the top. I still wasn't sure if social was trustworthy. Oh, okay, who am I kidding? It definitely wasn't trustworthy, but it felt too calculated in a sense. I don't think it wanted to torture me. It wanted to see how I would get through this. Well, the meal gave me some new energy. I went to the chalkboard and started writing down the info that I had so far, together with things about myself, things I didn't want to forget, that would remind me that I had a life outside of this. I made sure to keep it vague, just in case they came back here. Twenty-five, my age. Kiwi, the name of my cat. Psyche, my major. K and F, the first letters of my two best friends. Julia bitch. Manuel has leverage and a knife. Jackie, neutral so far. Josh, question mark. Well, my thoughts were interrupted by the ringing of the laptop. Time for another decision. Pick something from this list to be sent to a participant of your choice. A towel, a death threat, a bracelet keeping the participant from sleeping. I'm not sure what that last thing was supposed to be, but I guess it was another form of torture. I decided for the death threat. If I got the same chance to take a video, then maybe this could be my way to communicate with Manuel. Either way, if he sees that I'm wearing the shock collar now, he might go milder on me. Um, I want to send a death threat to Manuel. Great choice. Would you like to receive leverage information? Yes. The most important person in the life of Manuel is Sabrina, currently working as a nurse at Central Hospital. Always takes a bicycle to work. Oh, fucking hell, social. The video recording app opened. The microphone was blocked. Well, that was shit. I was planning on speaking. I had to get creative and fast. Social would probably check the video and make sure it's an actual threat. Well, I grabbed the glass of blood that Jackie had sent me the day before. It was smelling horribly, but I kept it just in case. I started filling up my mouth with the blood. God, I really had to fight not to vomit. I pressed play and got up to the middle of the room. Looking straight into the camera, I started spitting out the blood, trying to be as theatrical as possible. Choking myself, coughing with a freakish look on my face. Recording complete. Video will now be sent to participant Manuel. I could only hope that he understood what I'd done. You just received an item from participant Jackie. Walk up to the elevator now to pick it up. Hmm. A pack of cigarettes. Day 4 The day started off with another lovely shock from Julia. I started cursing this person and her evil fucking mind. Oh, she was in here to win, showing no remorse. She had to be on top at this point. What reason could she have to shock me even more? I tried to get up from bed. I was feeling extremely weak at this point. My legs were shaking. I was smelling horribly, and I was starving after only having one meal yesterday. Walking around the dry blood on the ground, I made my way to the table. I picked up the pack of cigarettes that I'd gotten yesterday. I usually don't smoke, but thought it could distract me a little. I opened the pack and noticed that it also contained a lighter. Oh, obviously you'd need one, but I didn't think about it until then. A lighter could get really fucking useful. I left the cigarettes where they were and put the lighter in my pocket. Social opened the chat to inform me that I could choose breakfast for Manuel. Oh, I was already dreading what he'd send me. At least this was my chance to talk to Social some more. Social, is there a way to remove the shock collar? Only if another participant decides to send it to someone else. Hmm, all right. That's new info. Is there only one of each item, like the knife and the cigarettes? Correct. Choose food combination for Manuel now. Um, oatmeal and tea. 
Social. How long have the other participants been here for? Manuel has chosen your breakfast. Walk to the elevator now to pick it up. Oh, for fuck's sake. I had to be more precise with my questions. It only gives me a really short time frame. I walked over to the elevator, expecting something smelly or rotten. I almost cried when I saw what was sitting on that tray. Three kiwis. Oh, while I was going crazy in the middle of the room last night, I'd made sure that my chalkboard would be in the picture. Just enough for someone to notice if they really paid attention. And he did. Why did he pick three, though? Did this mean he'd been here for three days, just like me? I spent most of the day thinking of other ways to send messages. Well, of course, this could all still be part of the experiment. That thought was always in the back of my mind, but somehow I felt sure that Manuel and the other participants were just that. Participants. Somehow tricked into this nightmare, just like me. Another alarm went off. My room turned red, and sirens started blasting. Suicide attempt. Suicide attempt. Suicide attempt. What the hell? I definitely wasn't trying anything like that. I walked to the laptop, but there was no information. And just like that, the alarm stopped again. You are now free to send another item to a player of your choice. Bandage. Shock collar. Death threat. Well, this is where I made another foolish mistake guided by pettiness, not logic. I should have tried to send another message, or, or at least get someone the bandage. Maybe there really was a suicide attempt, but even if that's true, I wouldn't know who. In the end, the hate and pain ruled over me, and I sent Julia the shock collar. As I logged in my choice, the collar around my neck snapped open. It must be automated. Move shock collar into the elevator now. Oh, at least a better option than being drugged again. I don't think everyone gets the same options because I was sent a book from Jackie. I was so happy that I'd finally have some form of entertainment, but that's before I realized that the entire text was nonsense. I spent a long time going through every single page to see if maybe there was some secret message in there, but I couldn't find anything. Eventually... I gave up. Congratulations, John. You have received 200 social points. Tonight you may pick your own dinner. Under normal circumstances, I would have been ecstatic about this. Finally, I could get some decent food. Some vitamins, some protein, and more water. Under normal circumstances, I would have been proud. But how could I be proud if I got all these points through letting out my anger and frustration like this? A shiver went down my spine when I thought about how painful four shocks in a row must have felt for Julia. That night, I couldn't fall asleep as much as I tried. I kept thinking about everything that had happened. I jumped up from bed as a thought struck me. Oh, please, please let this be true, I mumbled to myself. Jackie had sent me two items today. That couldn't be a coincidence. I opened the first page of the book and held the lighter underneath. God, I remember doing this when I was younger. She must have somehow gotten lemon juice. Help me. I can't take it anymore. I opened another page. This was extremely weird. The message said, I'm John. Are you real? Day 5 I know that... Many of the choices that either I or the others made during this experiment seem questionable, malicious or just occasionally pathetic. This is no excuse. I'm just asking you to keep in mind that we'd spent days in solitude, hardly sleeping or eating, physically and mentally at the limit. Or at a certain point, all you care about is survival, no matter what the cost. Breakfast time. Please choose something out of the list for participant Josh. Breakfast. Apparently the new day had already begun. It was still dark outside. I hadn't been able to sleep at all. I kept thinking about everything. Why was there a message with my name in the book? Had I been here before, or was it a way to mindfuck me again? 
After everything that had just happened last night, I decided both Manuel and Jackie were trustworthy. I didn't trust Julia. She was my strongest competitor, and she was ruthless. I want all of us to get out of here safe and sound, but if I wanted to have any choice of getting control, I needed to play smart and gain points. But first, I had to pick breakfast for Josh. This was good. I hadn't had any interaction with him so far. I needed to figure out if he was an ally or a competitor. Social, before I pick Josh's meal, could you inform me about my ranking? You are currently the highest ranking participant, John. Or can you tell me how many other participants there are? You have had interaction with every object that is participating in this round. This round? Pick a meal for Josh now. I went with a safe choice and sent him oatmeal and water. Nutritious, but not luxurious. I was really curious what he would get me, or if I'd get any breakfast at all. Yesterday I wasn't able to send him anything because I'd passed out. Hmm. A chicken sandwich, coffee and a bottle of water. That's strange. This is exactly what I got yesterday, except this time the coffee was hot. So, Julia probably skipped giving me dinner yesterday, and the things I'd found were from lunch that Josh had sent me. I sent a steak dinner, and she decided to give me nothing. I felt a deep urge to shock her again. Something inside of me was changing, and it scared me. It's as if I was just realizing that I had a dark side. A revengeful side. God, I was hateful. I'd never talked to this person or even seen them, and still I wanted to torture them, just because I could. I stopped myself before actually pressing the button. These people were playing with my mind, and I let them. This is probably what they wanted, for me to stop caring, to abuse my power. I was at the top. That should be enough for now. It is time to make another decision. You can now choose to send out one of the following items to a participant of your choice. Headphones. Bandages. Razor blades. I decided to send Manuel bandages. I had no gameplay here. It just seemed like the safest move. Suicide attempt. Suicide attempt. Suicide attempt. The siren and robotic voice filled up the room. Just the mention of suicide sent a shiver down my spine. My heart didn't stop racing until the siren stopped again. You received a video from participant Julia. It was a young woman. Her clothes were dirty and bloody. Manuel had made a rough impression as well, but Julia looked like she'd been here for a long time. She looked tired but her eyes were filled with rage. This didn't look like the decoy rage that I had acted out in my video. Her shock collar was gone, but I saw the bruises around her neck. And that's when I noticed she had a knife. She slowly moved it towards her throat, and her eyes never left the camera. I thought it was her way of threatening me until I saw the blood. She was actually cutting herself. And that's where the video paused. I hadn't noticed it before, but I saw it in that moment. She was sitting in front of a chalkboard, and there was something written on it. Die, John. I felt frozen to the screen, even after the video had disappeared. Tears came to my face. Oh, this was all so much. Not knowing whether this was just a trick, a mind game, or whether this girl had been pushed over the edge was ripping me apart. Had I given her the push? Was she really in danger? Was it too late? After a few hours of internalized terror, I calmed myself again. This could all be just a trick. If it was, then it was working. I spent the entire day just jumping around in my room. No decent thought coming out. Eventually, the ringing of my laptop got me back to reality. Hello, John. I want to personally congratulate you on how well you're doing in this experiment. I'm impressed by your score and the choices you are making. You are constantly improving, and if you keep going strong, you will be successfully completing the experiment soon. We're proud of you here at the social team. As a special treat, you'll be having dinner together with the second highest ranking participant today. Enjoy. Who is this? Social? 
Hi, John. This was a personal message sent to you by our head of research. Uh, can I message them as well? I am afraid not. Today, participant Josh will be joining you for dinner. The meal will be picked by social. Join me, as in face to face. Yes. Well, I thought I'm not allowed to know how other participants rank. I am not allowed to share information with you. Hmm. All right, social. Try to keep up the illusion that this is a legit experiment with all your freaking loopholes. Well, I almost typed that, but decided to delete it. It might just cost me points again. I really didn't trust any of this, but if it meant that I was actually meeting a real human being, I was all for it. I wished it was Julia, just so I could set things straight, but maybe it would be good to meet Josh. Figure out who this mysterious new person was. Pick up dinner from Elevator now. Where's Josh? The other participant will be joining soon. I picked up my meal. Steak, jacket potato, greens and champagne. This looked pretty great, although I only had one of each. As I walked back to my laptop, I realised what social had really meant by face to face. It was a video chat. On his side it was still buffering. I made sure to turn my laptop in such a way that the chalkboard would somehow be visible when I sat down. Josh looked like he was about my age. You could see that he was mentally exhausted, but... It was not as bad as with Manuel or Julia. So, are you John? I was surprised to hear a voice. For some reason I thought this would be muted. I had to be careful with what I said, though. Well, first of all, I didn't know if I could trust him. And second, Social was probably recording all of this. I had to keep up the illusion, and I was still trying, that I was a good participant. So, um, you're my strongest competitor. Pretty good for someone who just joined last. I said. I had no idea if this was actually true, but maybe this would get me some more answers. Ha! He forced out a smile. Oh, minus one, he said and nodded over. I think he was hinting at the strokes on my board. So I was right about that. I was really nervous. God, I wish I'd had time to prepare for this. Look, um, I did something pretty um, intense to get this high. He looked to the ground. Some participant hasn't been sleeping in days because of me. I could really hear the remorse in his voice. But then he continued. But he must have made some even stronger decisions to be the one on top, I guess. He was trying to get information from me. I guess we both know how to play the game, I said and swallowed. I still felt the guilt deep inside of me. I took a big gulp from the champagne. I guess so. Well, we're not at the loser dinner, he whispered. Do you mean the others are talking as well? He nodded. How do you know? I asked. Social. Uh, which one of them's the lowest? He shrugged. I guess social really does keep the other ranking secret. I was about to ask him something, but the connection was already gone. Well, at least I'd gotten some information, if Josh could be trusted. I know that some of the other players probably talked today as well. I'd have to ask Social about this, see if I can get more insights. And I knew that Josh probably gave someone that bracelet that keeps you from sleeping. I started feeling woozy. Had they put something in the drink? I somehow carried myself to the bed, but then everything went dark again. Day 6 the morning had started off with the usual breakfast routine. I sent Manuel oatmeal and water. He sent me a glass of blood. <laughs> Delicious. I haven't had one of those in days. I didn't know how to feel about Josh after last night. He seemed somehow calculated, but he made a genuine impression. Well, so far, he'd always sent me decent food. The sleeping bracelet feels like something social pressured him to do. He was playing the game to win, but... He wasn't extremely evil. He was smart, though. He'd figured things out pretty quickly, and he wanted to have control. Just like I did, as that was the only chance to get out, presumably. It also meant that he would probably be coming for me now. I'd been here for five full days already, and day six was starting off as awful as always. 
I tried to look for the book to figure out a way to send a message, but it was gone. So were the cigarettes. They must have taken them last night. Luckily, I put the lighter in my pocket. My hopes of getting out of here in a healthy way were getting smaller by the second, but I couldn't let this get me down. If I started losing hope now, I'd probably die in here. I had to get into survival mode. Ding! Ding! Hello, John. Today we have a very special assignment on the planet. You'll be live-streaming the other participants and play a game of choices. There are many points to be gained here, so do your best. Go sit down in your bed with the wall behind you. Four video screens opened up. I recognized Manuel and Josh. Julia was there as well, alive. I felt a feeling of relief wash over me. Well, I didn't trust her, but I didn't want her dead either. The last one must have been Jackie. She looked a little older than the rest of the group. The bags under her eyes let me assume that she was probably the one that hadn't slept in days. God, that must really screw with your mind. Welcome, participants. All of you have been doing well so far. Some did better than others, but don't worry. This game is a chance to change everything. Let's get started. Josh, choose a participant to fulfill the following task. Eat a raw deer heart. He didn't even seem to think about it. He responded right away. Manuel. Manuel, what to the elevator and pick up the heart now. If you choose not to, you will not receive any food or beverages for the rest of the experiment. I could see him struggle. His eyes were filled with hatred. Eventually he got up. Looking into the camera with tears in his heart, he bit into the dark red organ, finishing it off piece by piece. Josh didn't even flinch, and Julia looked more confused than revolted. Next round. John and Josh. You can both decide to either remove a tooth or a fingernail. Choice must be unanimous. What do you choose? Tooth. Tooth. I sighed. If he'd picked nails, we probably would have had to do both. Josh wrapped his shirt around one of his teeth, closed his eyes and abruptly pulled it out. Blood filled his mouth. He held the tooth to the camera. I followed. Oh, normally your mind tries to protect you. Hurting yourself like this takes a lot of willpower. For me, it wasn't willpower though. It was fear. Fear of whatever the alternative to this might be. Oh, it was painful as fuck, but still felt harmless compared to what came next. We all went through the game. No questions asked. Nobody dared to disobey. Julia can have a broken nose or all hair burned off their scalp. Manuel, decide which option. Manuel was just shaking his head. Well, his face was still red from the blood and his eyes were full of tears. He was genuinely scared. Julia showed almost no reaction. Something had really broken her spirit. Manuel, send your choice now or lose all your privileges. Finally, he typed. Nose. Just like that, Julia turned towards the wall and repeatedly banged her face against it. As she turned around, blood ran all over her face. Her nose was completely out of place. Still, she was calm. Not a single tear. John, it is time for you to decide. Will Jackie cut off one of her fingers or be prohibited from sleeping for the rest of her time here? I could see the desperation in her eyes. How long can one survive without any sleep? A week? Two? I knew what she would choose if she could. Finger. As Jackie is not in possession of a knife at the moment, one of our helpers will arrive soon to fulfill the task. Jackie looked at her arm and smiled. You all did very well so far. Your wounds will be treated by one of our doctors shortly. Only one question left. One of the participants has to die. Majority wins. 
Who do you choose? This couldn't be real. This was a whole new level of fucked up. Well, I hesitated. How could I possibly answer this question? Manuel seemed to think the same, because neither of us answered. But we didn't have to, as the majority had already made the decision. John. 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 Participant Files, Round 4. Participant, John. Rounds, 4. Ranking, not applicable. Obedience level, strong. Subject went through significant growth. At the start, decisions were of pure altruistic nature. As personal gain was made transparent, change of tactics. At the end of the round, signs of resignation had become evident. A need for power and authority was established. After rising to the top on score level, Participant John had given up own will entirely, made deathly choices for a number of participants without signs of remorse. Participant Julia. Rounds 3. Ranking 2. Obedience level intermediate. The subject showed resilience and willpower all throughout rounds 2 and 3. Inconsistent emotional state. Was almost removed due to repeated suicide attempts. Strong determination to eliminate Participant John. At the end of round four, Participant shown signs of apathy. Level of obedience is stable at this point. Participant Jackie. Rounds one, ranking three. Obedience level, strong. The subject showed occasional competent decision-making skills. Started off with a subjectively altruistic mindset. However, would let other participants influence their choices. Interest of future testing. Participant Manuel. Rounds 1. Ranking 4. Obedience level. Weak. The subject has poor decision-making skills. Let's actions be guided by emotions. Has no explicit benefit for the experiment at this point, and will therefore be eliminated. Participant, Josh. Rounds, 1. Ranking, 1. Obedience level, intermediate. The subject has passed expectations. They grew fast and showed remarkable pattern in decision making. However, level of loyalty needs to be further examined. Day 7. I don't even know how to put into words how I was feeling last night. I didn't sleep at all. For hours I was sitting on the bed, staring towards the door, waiting for my end. Of course, I didn't know if I would actually die or not, but, but in that moment the adrenaline was flowing through my entire body. Fear can be a real rush. My mind was not ready to die. I thought about Kiwi, who had been left alone for days. I thought about my mother, hoping she'd be safe. Thought about my friends, about my childhood, about the summers we went swimming in the lake, about the Sunday mornings watching cartoons with my dad. Oh, I was not ready to die. I felt hate. Pure, revengeful, bitter hate. For social, for the experiment, for the other participants. This entire situation was just so fucked up. I wondered if I'd done the same as Josh, had he been the highest ranking player. Part of me was scared to admit that I probably would have, if it meant that I was free. I thought about the other two and felt especially betrayed by Jackie. They couldn't have known that I was the highest ranking player. I kept staring at the door, waiting patiently, but nobody came. Maybe it had just been a mind game after all. Maybe last night was just a farce. Ding, ding. Breakfast time. Today you will not have to choose. Go to elevator now to pick up your meal. Ugh. Prisoners on the death penalty usually get to choose their last meal. No answer. I walked over to see what would be on the tray. Maybe it was some sort of clue. It was a finger. Was this a sign from Jackie? 
Was the reason she picked me to die because of the choice I'd made for her? I let it fall to the ground and broke down in tears. I lost all hope of ever getting out of this place. The chat window was still open. Social, am I still the highest ranking player? Currently the highest ranking participant is John. Wait, had Social just given me a name? I never answer questions on the rankings of other participants. Hello, John. I want you to know that I'm very impressed with your progress. I understand that it must feel surprising to see the other participants turn on you. Remember, the only reason they want you dead is because you are a threat. Wouldn't you murder someone if it meant getting your freedom back? We are sad that it had to come to this point, but we have provided something for you to make this a little easier. Make the right decisions. Who is this? Hello, John. You just received another personal message from my head of research. You get to make another decision now. Do you want to continue and accept your destiny, or put fate into your own hands? Go to Elevator now to pick up the items sent to you by the head of research. <laughs> a bottle of vodka and a gun. One bullet. Last night the majority decided for the death of participant John. Oh, if this was making things easier, what was the alternative? What kind of gruesome death had they planned for me? I took a big gulp of the vodka. I didn't even have to think about this. Hey, social, come and get me. Just bring the head of research as well. I'd love to meet them. Well, they could go fuck themselves if they thought I was going to make things easy for them. I grabbed the bottle of vodka and poured it out in front of the door making a trail towards the bed where I sat down. I held the gun towards the door. If someone came in, I had one chance to shoot them. My chances weren't great, especially as I doubt only one person would come, so I kept the lighter close. If I had to go, I wouldn't do this on my own. I would take them with me. I waited for what must have been hours, but nothing happened. Every time I thought I'd figure them out, Every time I thought things were ending, they just pulled another trick. They must have cameras everywhere. How could I have believed that this was it? The laptop started ringing again. The sound of pure misery. Hello, John. We see that you did not decide to use the gun. You just gained a hundred social points. We do not appreciate suicide attempts. What is this? Why are you doing this to me? Come, please just give me answers. If I have to die, at least let me know what the purpose of all this is. With a majority of three votes, the death of participant John was decided. Do you agree with this choice? <laughs> no. No, I do not. Adding your social score with the one of participant Manuel, you could overrule the majority. What does this mean? What's going to happen now? You have two choices. Team up with participant Manuel. If you can agree on another participant's death without discussion, it will be executed. Keep in mind, participant Manuel could choose John. Well, this was no option. It was too much of a gamble. Um, what's the other choice? You can join another round of decisions. This time you'll be making them on your own. If you gain a thousand points in this game, the life of participant John will be spared. Oh, this could only be another round of torture, but at this point, what did I have to lose? First round, give gun to participant Julia, 200 points, or to participant Josh, 50 points. Oh, she'd tried to kill herself before. If I sent the gun, this could end fatally. But then again, I'd just send it right. I mean, the decision was all hers. <sighs> Julia. 200 points. I moved the gun to the elevator. I hated giving it away, but I doubt it would have been much use anyway. Participant Manuel is free to leave and go home. Minus 200 points. Or he will stay indefinitely. 200 points. Shit. 
I really, really wanted him to get out of here. To get back to Sabrina, but even more than that, I wanted to live. <sighs> Make him stay. 400 points. I felt like such a dick. I just get the only person from freedom that had spared my life. Jackie will lose the rest of their hand. 200. Or John will lose a finger. 300. This was a really awful decision. A finger was nothing compared to a whole hand, and it would give me more points. But was I ready to sacrifice something for someone who'd wanted my death? Oh, Jackie. 600 points. But if I hadn't realized it before, this game really showed me how weak the human mind is. You do anything some authority asks you to do, as long as it perks for yourself. God, I felt like such a horrible human being. And it got even worse. Josh gets to speak to Head of Research. Minus a hundred. Or Manuel loses one toe. Two hundred. God, I couldn't harm him even more. Josh. 500 points. Oh, I hoped I wouldn't regret this decision. You can end it all now. Julia will be kept from all benefits, including sleep and nutrition, for one week. 500 points. Do you accept? Oh, would she survive that? I didn't know. All I could hope was that she had something to drink saved in her room. Well, who cares? I mean, she wanted me dead. She didn't even flinch when she typed in my name. You have to do anything to survive. Yes. Would you like to spare the life of John? Minus 1,000 points. Yes. Right after I typed it in, I ran to the bathroom to throw up. This had been the hardest moment of the experiment so far. I'd never hated myself as much as I did in this moment. Oh, I hope survival was worth this. Day 8 I woke up lying next to the toilet. The memories of yesterday came back to me, and I felt like throwing up again. Finally, I got up to see if there were any new messages from social any sign that this misery would end soon. Dinner time. You may now choose a meal for participant John. Why did this say my own name? Maybe they wanted me to pick my own dinner last night. I didn't care. I, mean, I should have felt hungry, but the guilt kept me from even thinking about food. What time was it? I hadn't got a breakfast message yet. As if social could read my mind. The laptop started ringing again. The text was not from Social, though. Good morning. Social? No. I would like to ask a few questions, if that's all right. Does it matter what I say? It always matters. Your decisions are what brought you this far. But I don't ever remember accepting to come to this hell. What do you remember? If I answer your questions... You let me go. Yes, Josh. After this conversation, you are free to go home. Do you remember your home? I, did they just mix up my name? I did vote for Josh to have a conversation with the head of research. I just decided to go with it then. Yeah, I, I do. I have a little apartment where I live with my cat, but you probably know all about that. And you think the cat is called Kiwi? Yes, I can see that shortboard. How do they know the name of my cat? Um, yes, Kiwi. What does Kiwi look like? I couldn't remember. There are also letters on there. K and F. Kristen and Finn, right? How do you know that? Do you remember what they look like? Or what Mary looks like? Do you remember your childhood home? Oh, I tried to think of my mum. Blonde hair, brown eyes. She was about 50. For some reason, I didn't remember more. What did she look like when I was younger? 
Why did my memory feel frozen? It was as if I was thinking of a photo, not a real person. Keep thinking. The image shifted. It was a woman with short hair, a kind smile. Her hair was black when I was little, but now it had turned grey. A name came to my mind. Margaret? Who was this woman? Do you know who Margaret is? I believe that is your mother. Who's Mary? That must be the mother of John. I am John. Are you sure about that? More memories came up. Kiwi, my dad, my friends, the lake. Everything was wrong. They were simply images. They'd morphed into something else. College, a woman. Blood, a girl. She had a tattoo on her arm. A hospital. I started remembering more. I had joined an experiment once, at college. I didn't remember much, except that the research was corrupt and evil. After I left that experiment, terrible things happened to me, to everyone around me. I decided to leave, and I travelled around Europe for a while, but wherever I went, things went bad for me. They must have found me. Or did I find them? They wiped away everything and gave me false memories. Josh, you did really well here. I realize this experiment has its ups and downs, but eventually you grew to the top. You showed no remorse. You are a true leader. Josh? Social kept calling me John, and I just accepted it. How did I forget about my own name? No, I didn't. I only did what you made me do. I did what I had to do. Because of points... Numbers on a laptop. You decided to shock both Manuel and Julia. You sacrificed Jackie's hand. You gave Julia a gun even though you knew she was suicidal. Although, you did spare John's life. Who is John? You got to know him as Josh. We swapped your identity with his and added him as an additional variable. He's on his way to become part of our team. Before this, he'd been torturing Julia, and it worked. God, that's why she wanted me dead. And she probably convinced Jackie, too. Why? Why did you do all this? All these people were normal human beings living their lives. Keep them in a room alone and give them power to make decisions, and they will lose all sense of humanity. And they are no exception. We have tested this in many settings already. Some humans grow above, however. A very select number get to make rules, not follow them. And John is one of them. <laughs> no. He had potential, but he is nothing like you. You're the only person that could remotely come close to me, and that is why I need you. You were always one step behind me. I had to make sure you were strong enough to be part of this. To be part of the new life. And now I know. You have everything that it takes. I am extremely proud of you. You want me to start doing these sick experiments on innocent people? This is happening. There is no way for you to change any of this. Our institution is far more powerful than you might believe. I'm giving you the option to be on the side that makes the decisions. I am not forcing you to do anything. Just think about it. You are free to go home now, but... We will see each other again soon. Goodbye, Nine. That was the last thing I remember. I woke up in my apartment, my real apartment. Not the one from my memories, John's, or whatever they made me believe. My memories slowly came back, and I wish they hadn't. Thought about running away, starting over somewhere far away, but for some reason I think they'd find me. For the same reason that the authorities won't listen to me. They are powerful. They're not just doing experiments. They're planning to take control over humanity or something. Yesterday I received an envelope with the patient files. As well as this postcard. The next round of the social experiment will start soon. Do you want to be an object or a leader? I've thought about this a lot. About joining them. Not as a test subject, but as a researcher. 
thought about this a lot since I've been back home. I don't know what will happen next, but this study did teach me a lot about human nature and my own mind. How arbitrary freedom and choice were. I followed them. Blindly followed some authority for made-up points and false promises. I know I have to get back there. Not to become part of the research team, but to save the ones I left behind. I will not accept being this terrible person. I can do better with the knowledge I've gained. The envelope has no return address. So for now, all I can do is wait. Hot off the press from No Sleep. Yep, um, part four of that four-part series was only um, delivered <laughs> yesterday. And I kindly got permission from the author to read it all for you. So I got onto it immediately, and there you go. But a bit of a disaster on the way, I have to tell you. Um, the life of a narrator is not an easy one. Sometimes we uh, press record, and then we speak for half an hour or so, only to realize we hadn't pressed record at all, and we'd lost everything we'd just done. Yeah, it sucks, I can tell you. Ugh. But I made it in the end, and here we go, with a beautiful, beautiful story for you for this Friday evening. I'll be back again very soon. Of course I will. You're going to join me, aren't you? Yes, you will. Until then, very, very sweet dreams to you and to me. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>